What's up guys, gals and pals, it's Raddy here. In today's video we're going to be kitbashing and painting not one, but two Empress Pierce models from start to finish. This is Raddy Craft. To me, the Empress Spears are by far one of the coolest Ultramarine successor chapters. They hail from the ocean world of Nemetin, where the primitive tribes habiting the planet worship the near constant rainfall and believe the spears to be nothing but ghosts of the children they've lost to the chapter. The book, The Spear of the Emperor by Aaron Dembski Bowden, is truly one of the best 40k books I've read, and it portrays the spears in a very interesting and actually rather relatable light compared to how you'd usually think of space marines. The idea for this video came to me since the January 2021 White Dwarf included an index Astartes for the Emperor Spears, providing a lot of insights into how the chapter functions and also their own unique rules for 40k, which seemed really interesting. I'm not a competitive player myself, but being able to combine the melee stuff from this index Astartes, the ranged stuff from the Ultramarine supplement and all the stuff from the Space Marines Codex does sound pretty powerful. I've been wanting to try my hand at these blue boys for a while already, and this seemed just like the perfect excuse to do so. Let's bring out the plastic and get to work. As with any sort of a kit bashing project, the first thing we need to do is to find the correct bits and the correct models to base this project on. As I said, I'm doing two models here. Arguably the more important and interesting model will be the Lieutenant or Battle Guard as they are called by the Emperor's Spears. I decided to use the plume and this tasset bit from the Ultramarines upgrade sprue. The plume is actually the longer plume cut in half because the shorter one that would have matched better had some Ultramarine symbols on it that I would have had to hide. The spears that I glued there are from the Chaos Marauder Horseman kit. As for the simpler model, the Intercessor, I decided to add this small fur trophy thing from a Space Wolves kit. It adds a little bit of flair but doesn't take any effort really. The Tasset had these pretty prominent ultramarine symbols at the bottom, so I cut them off and replaced them with small bits of green stuff. Creating these small half circles was rather easy. But why paint two Emperor Spears, you might ask? Well, the idea here is that I want to show how to paint one to a simple tabletop standard. Uh, a standard to which you could easily paint a whole army to in a rather quick time. And for the second one, I want to really go all out on converting and customizing him to really represent what I believe the Emperor Spears uh, might look like based on the books and the arts and everything like that. I also decided to use blue stuff molds to create this sort of a fur bit hanging off the battle guard's shoulder. The original bit is from Ragnar Blackmane, I believe. Blue stuff is a thermoplastic material, which means that it's a plastic that softens in hot water basically. It allows you to easily create molds of your bits so that you can use them for conversion projects like this. I actually created a separate video of how to create these molds and how I use them for my conversions featuring this same fur bit last weekend. Uh, I'll put a link for the video up there in the corner if you want to check it after watching this one. It was actually the most popular video that I've created so far, so I'm happy to see that a lot of you got some use out of it. Here I'm just gluing down the molded fur bit onto the shoulder of the battle guard. Next up we're going to sculpt a little bit of fur onto the shoulder to melt this bit together with the rest of the model. The only challenge here is that we have to match the texture of the green stuff fur we sculpt to the bit we used. I'm using a softer mix of green stuff here. I took a little bit of the blue stuff off the mix. And this is just because I prefer this sort of a softer mix for fur and hair, personally. As for sculpting the fur, it's nothing special really. I use a cocktail stick to start creating these sorts of indentations into the green stuff, mimicking the texture of the fur. I do this in a pretty orderly fashion first, and then I start adding some variation to the mix to create the sort of flowing nature of the fur, as you can see there. 
green stuff is really one of the most easy things to get into in terms of sculpting. I definitely recommend giving it a try if you haven't already. It's really really hard to actually mess it up since it's such a random and organic texture. Trying these sorts of techniques bravely really opens you up to a whole new world of possibilities in terms of converting your models. You'll also constantly improve, so you'll be able to try more and more tricky stuff the further you get along with your sculpting journey. A lot of people seem to tell me and seem to feel that what I do with green stuff is really far from their reach. And I think for most people that is just not true. Personally, I started experimenting more with sculpting around a year ago, a bit over I think. And I don't think I've progressed like particularly fast or anything like that. It's all about consistency, practice and knowing the correct techniques really. Here I'm sculpting some simple leather straps to add to the model. Once again, Valbjörn, another great content creator here on YouTube, has an excellent tutorial on how to do this and I definitely recommend checking it out. The main idea is having a bit of green stuff that has been drying for a while already. Then you roll it into a small roll and using a cocktail stick you push down on it creating this sort of a strap. Of course all the time you keep your tools wet so that you don't accidentally leave any texture. Although here in the end I like to press it a little bit with the cocktail stick to add some bit of texture by purpose. And with the green stuff drying, I think it's time to get ready for painting. I start the process by priming both of the models black. I then give them a white zenithal undercoat that will act as the base for the blue ink that we're going to use in a moment. I'll put the paint names in the upper left corner of the video, that way I don't have to keep repeating them while painting. I decided to keep the helmet separate so that I don't have to mask them off when painting the rest of the armor blue. Having an airbrush really saves some time when painting white armor specifically. Here I'm covering all of the armor with the Prussian blue ink. After that I start highlighting from above using Citil Hoeth Blue. If you wanted to save some time you could maybe even skip the Prussian Blue step. Also if you don't have an airbrush Hoeth Blue is definitely the color I recommend to base coat the armor with. Here we're doing some further highlights with some Fenrisian Grey. After that we need to bring some of the shadows back by airbrushing some contrast space walls grey from down below. In hindsight the effect here is really small as the paint is really thinned down. You could probably just skip it if you want to. And once again here's my favorite life hack for pin washing space marines, oil paints. I'm using just some random craft store brand of oil paints thinned with mineral spirits. I use it to shade all the recesses on the helmet and the armor. This once again is a technique that I really recommend you give a shot. It will change your life, it's so much faster than using acrylics to do the same. As for the Aquila, I wasn't actually sure if it should be white or silver. I decided to go with a white Aquila, so I base coated it with grey seer. I did the same to the fur because we're going to be using shade and contrast paints on it a bit further on. They work really well as a base when you kind of wet blend them together on surfaces that have a lot of texture like these. I then used the same black oil paint to pin wash the Aquila as well and I highlighted the Aquila using pure white. The white on the Aquila is not an exact match with the helmet, but I did use the same ink. I think it's good enough. So here are the different colors I'm going to be using for the fur. The idea is that I just splotch them on and then mess the kind of borders between the different colors, mixing it up sort of how you do wet blending. 
For the Intercessor, I'm going to leave it like that. And for the Battle Guard, we're coming back later to highlight it. The Purity Seals and everything else that I wanted to be red were base coated after. I was really excited with how these Emperor Spears were coming along already. And I just couldn't wait to get to attach the helmet onto the Battle Guard. Normally I don't use sub-assemblies too often, but for this model it just seemed silly not to do it really. Here you can see me painting the lenses. I paint them red and then start doing gradual highlights of lighter colors towards the middle of the helmet. Finally I add white reflection dots to the outer corners. The rest of the reds were shaded with Karabuk Crimson and highlighted using Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. After that I edge highlighted both of the marines helmets with some pure white. To save time the helmet is the only edge highlighted part of the armor on the intercessor. I decided to highlight the helmet of this intercessor a little bit because I feel that even with these sort of tabletop level models if there's some place you want to pay a little bit of extra attention it is definitely the face or the helmet of the model since that's where the eye is naturally drawn towards. Painting black areas to a good tabletop standard over a zenithal base coat could not really be easier. I just slap on some contrast black templar and call it done. I've found a few great ways to use the contrast paint since their launch and this is definitely one of my favorites when trying to save some time. If you watch the video until the absolute end of it, I'll show one more great use for contrast paints that I can guarantee you've not seen before. It'll be worth it, trust me. It's still the same black Templar, and as you can see, two coats cover even over this red really well. I'll come back and highlight it later on. For now, we have to focus on getting the Intercessor to a basic tabletop level first. I paint the leather parts on him by base coating them with Steel Legion Drab. On the Battle Guard, I also base coat all the bone areas and all the purity seals with Steel Legion Drab as well. I give the leather parts two heavy washes of Agrax leather shade. The rest of the brown areas I wash just once. I actually have a separate video for this leather recipe that I'm using here. I'll put the link up there for you to check out if you're interested. After the washes have dried, I edge highlight the leather areas back up using Steel Legion Drab first and then Bane Blade Brown. On tabletop models, if you want some more speed, you could really just skip right away to Bane Blade though. On the Intercessor, I leave all the brown parts like that, except for the Purit seals here. I start mixing in white to Bane Blade Brown to create this sort of a light parchment color. I know I said I'd focus on getting the Intercessor done first, but since I had the paints on the palettes already, I decided to quickly finish the leathers on the Battle Guard. I do this by gradually mixing in white to the Bane Blade Brown for further highlights. I also added a bit of scratching to the leather while at it. It's a quick way to make your leather look more believable. And just to reiterate, I did not take these final steps on the Intercessor. If you're in a hurry, I recommend doing this sort of stuff for your more important characters and the like. Next up, we're going to use exactly the same colors to highlight the skulls. As you can see on the leather, most of the area was left rather dark. On these skulls, I do the opposite, where only a little bit of the darkest recesses will be left, the dark brown color, and most of the bone will be highlighted towards the lighter colors. This way, even using the same paints, we can make the two different materials really look like different materials. I think. I'm also just a tiny bit lazy and pretty good at coming up with excuses and pretentious sounding reasons for why I do things the way I do them. And here you can see all the brown parts completed. Next up we're going to do the metallics. The steel areas are base coated using, uh, I think it's called gunmetal, and the gold areas are base coated using liberator gold by Citadel. The steel areas get a wash of non-oil and the gold areas get a wash of agrax. 
nice and simple. An interesting thing to note is that one of the knee pads should be this darker blue color, so I bring it down a bit using a few coats of the same Prussian blue ink from earlier. It's meant for the warrior's personal heraldry, which of course our basic intercessor has not earned yet for time-saving purposes. He's as average as average can get. Nemeton needs all of the warriors it can get however, so I think it's time to start wrapping things up even for this average intercessor, the first model. I throw on some agro and earth texture paint for a quick base. I then use a wet finger to clean up the edges a bit. I'll come back to the base a bit later, but now there's one crucial thing that we need to do, the chapter symbol. Freehanding iconography like this is often a matter of initially breaking the symbol down into simple shapes like lines. Of course if you were doing a whole force of the Emperor's Spears, you'd probably want to look into getting a custom transfer sheet with the decals for the chapter symbol and some other iconography perhaps. Since I'm just painting these two models for the video, however, I felt that it would be easier for me to just go with the freehand route. While the trident on the icon was done by bulking up lines to the correct shape, the skull is initially just a circle with a rectangle underneath for the teeth and two dots for the cheekbones. I then add some black for the eyes and the nasal cavity and call it a day. I promised we'd get back to the base, so here we're getting back to the base. I add some kitty litter with some super glue to create some variety on it. I paint the stones with dawnstone and wash them with contrast basilicanum grey. While waiting for it to dry, the small imperfection left on the pauldron from cutting the model of the spruce started bothering me, so I decided to hide it with some quick battle damage. It's just black paint highlighted with fenrisian grey. I then give the stones a couple of coats of dry brushing using light greys and near white. I decided to use this rubble pigment to add some weathering on the model and to tie it in with the base. This is a nice bang for your buck technique to make your models look a bit more advanced rather easily. Do notice here that the pigment is not as prominent after a coat of matte varnish, which is exactly what I wanted. Now we just paint the rim black and the first model of the two is done. Now with our tabletop intercessor complete, it's time to push ahead and see how far we can take this battle guard based on the same paint recipes, but just taking everything a notch further than we did with the intercessor. Let's see where we get. The first step beyond tabletop level is to highlight the fur. I do this using a grey sear and then adding in some white for further highlights. And yes, I do highlight every strand individually. I can finally also place the head on the model. Man, it looks so good. Black areas such as this ribbing between the armor plates and the black parts of the plume are highlighted using Dark Reaper and then mixing in some white for the further highlight layers. The power sword and the spears will get this special true metallic treatment. I first sketch on the highlights and the shadows using pure black and a bright silver. Then I start blending them together by creating mixes of these two colors and feathering them outwards. It's a pretty organic process with a lot of back and forth, but it gives a really neat end result that looks especially cool when moving the model around under different kinds of lighting. Initially it can take some time, but with some practice you'll get the hang of it. Doing both sides of this blade took me only around 10 minutes. After blending I highlight whatever these thingies are called and all the edges of the blade using the same silver. I wanted this blade to look pristine rather than weathered, so I didn't do my usual stippling edge highlight. I then start painting this sort of a lightning pattern emanating from the blade. It's just a matter of doing short, straight and thin blue lines in this sort of an irregular lightning pattern. I then highlight the pattern by painting on some mixes of blue and white towards the areas where the lines cross and the edges of the blade as well. 
This sort of a power weapon effect fits the Emperor's spears particularly well in my opinion, considering the stormy climate of their home planet. Using the same blue I start glazing towards the bottom of the blade to create a bit of a glow effect. I also mix in some white to paint these thingies. I don't know what they're called. If you do, please let me know. After a few layers of the glazes, I'm happy with the effect and I go back to strengthen the lines back up. Here is the finished weapon. The rest of the metallics are far more simple to highlight. Here I just do simple edge highlights of silver. On the shaft of the spear I do this sort of a stippling highlights of the same silver. On the gold areas I mix the same silver with the base coat of Liberator gold and edge highlights everything using that. I also do some selective edge highlighting using a mix with a bit more silver in the end. This gives a nice end result of this sort of a pale gold rather than a really yellow gold that you sometimes see. You already saw me freehand the chapter symbol once, so I'm not going to show it again. This one did come out better, however, as is often the case when you do something multiple times. While our intercessor had not yet earned any sort of personal heraldry, I decided to give our battle guard the Manticora Bestia Fidelitas. It's a symbol used by all the chapters protecting Alaris Vale, known as the Adeptus Velari, and a symbol that many of the Emperor's spears proudly show on their knee pad. Unfortunately, black on dark blue is not a very visible combo, so the effect of painting this is not huge. I then painted on some of these Orkham runes on the model, on the skulls and on both of the pauldrons. After completing the runes, it was the time to start edge highlighting the armor. The first layer is done using Fenris in grey. I'm not sure if I'm the only one who feels like this, but edge highlighting space marines, while tedious, can often be oddly relaxing and even therapeutical. Hey, uh, just a quick break here from painting the model. If you've been enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like, perhaps even comment and subscribe to the channel. That sort of stuff really helps the channel grow and helps other people find these videos as well. Thank you so much for all the support so far. I think it's time to get back to painting now. Next up we're going to continue with the edge highlights, this time mixing in some white to the fenders and grey. I focus these further edge highlights towards the areas that would naturally catch the light. I did also edge highlight all the runes I painted on the pauldrons and on the knee pad. It makes them look a lot nicer. Next up we're adding some chipping on the armor by stippling on some black in areas that might be damaged. Supposedly the Emperor's spears are known for keeping their armor in a fairly pristine condition, so less is more. The chips are then highlighted using the same mix of fenders and grey and white. Finally we can glue the spear onto his base and... Uh... Alright, let's try that again, this time patiently waiting all the 10 seconds for the glue to dry and being a bit more careful when placing it down. Good. Using the same rubble pigment from before, we weathered this model's feet. Once again, the varnish really makes the effect more subtle than it first looks. Even while painting the rim black, I feel like we missed something crucial though. Surely we're done with the model now, right? I mean, we've painted the rim black, we've added the tufts, everything like that. No. As the spears themselves would put it, Spovakara, Ul Sarun. 